All right, since it's 1.03, uh, I'm going to go ahead and get us started. This is paid contribution, past, present, and future. This is a core conversation. It's a very, it's, it's a mostly participatory session. I'm not going to call on anyone, but you are uh, welcome to uh, participate. We will have a uh, Google Doc open where you can uh, post your questions and thoughts. And there's also a microphone, so um, you can ask our panelists directly uh, questions. And this is the link to the Google Doc. It's bit.ly forward slash paid dash contribution dash notes. B-I-T dot L-Y slash paid dash contribution dash notes. And I encourage you to also take notes within the doc itself. We will um, synthesize the comments later um, and hopefully we can share it with the rest of the community. So, let's see. Uh, to get it to get us started, I'm going to read um, part of the session description just to get our thoughts on the topic. So, for most of Drupal's uh, history, there have been occasional opportunities to get paid by some contributors to Core, but in the last couple of years, we have seen uh, significant growth in the number of individuals working on Core as their primary job, and the number of companies employing those individuals. We also now have the Drupal Association providing grants for some of the critical work on core. And um, it has enabled some improvements that would, have, uh, that would have been nearly impossible to accomplish otherwise. But it also brings concerns uh, about fairness, power imbalances, and uh, volunteer morale, motivation, and, and other uh, topics. My name is Alina McKenzie on Drupal.org. I am Alimac, and that is my Twitter handle uh, right there. I'm a system administrator and web developer based in Chicago, and I've been uh, working with Drupal for about four years and uh, involved with the community for about two. Our panelists are Kalpana Gol. Uh, my name is Kalpana Gwil. I'm Kgwil on Drupal.org. Um, I'm from Washington, D.C., work for Forum One as a developer. I started contributing to Core um, in April 2013, um, so since then I have been contributing. And we're very happy to have with us uh, Ronnie Kantis from Druid. Um, I want to extend my thanks for uh, being one of the sponsors of the Mentor Thank You Dinner. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, so I'm a, a co-founder of Druid. Uh, in addition to being a developer, I'm kind of responsible for the brand and uh, and the marketing, which in our case mostly means community marketing, and now uh, also includes paying for for a few developers to actually contribute to core and all the other things. So, yeah. And finally, we have uh, Kathy Thais. Hi, I'm Kathy. I'm ESCT. Uh, on Drupal.org, and I guess I've been contributing to course for a few years now, um, and I get uh, paid to do it. Um, I have a little interesting history about how I got paid, but right now it's my full-time job. Thank you. So I have a couple of notes about uh, some of the history of uh, paid contribution. First of all, this is not a, a recent concept, um, although it has gotten, it has sort of exploded in the last couple of years. Uh, it is, we have been as early as around the time of Drupal 4.5, there had been um, some paid contribution going on. Uh, there is not a single model of either paid or unpaid uh, contribution. We have several. Uh, in no particular order, we have uh, some full-time employees who are paid um, to work on core. 
We also have employees uh, of companies that uh, provide a regular portion of their time uh, to work on Drupal, to, to contribute to Drupal, or they have regular intervals at which they can uh, contribute um, and be paid for it. We have folks who uh, are full-time employees and work on Drupal in between projects whenever um, there's available time, um, but this kind of contribution is not regular. Uh, there have been uh, several instances in which uh, Drupal contributors have crowdfunded, um, have self, uh, uh, self <clears throat> have crowdfunded their own um, uh, funds for contribution through uh, services like uh, GitTip, or right now it's Gratipay or Drupal Fundus. Some contribution is done through short-term or longer-term contracts, but these are finite uh, compensated uh, type of um, payments. And uh, finally, we have some contribution that is funded through indirect payments, such as uh, scholarships, grants, and um, uh, that pay for ex some or all expenses, but are not directly uh, paying uh, salary or contract or anything like that. So, let's talk about um, paid contribution. Once again, we have a Google Doc where you can um, post your questions, uh, make notes, and I'm gonna start off um, the questions with a question to all the panelists about how they, um, how they are currently paid or unpaid with uh, what's, what's the model that they're working within. Starting me. Um, so currently I'm not paid to work on Drupal Core. Um, I started working on Drupal 8. I have zero contribution for Drupal 7 and I got motivated because I wanted to learn Drupal 8. Um, my company encouraged me in the beginning to go to the sprints and work on Core, um, but we do have to survive. Companies do have bills to pay, so currently not, <coughs> excuse me, not paid to work on um, Core, but I do contribution in my own personal times. Yeah, so <clears throat> I'm also not paid to contribute, but I'm kind of on the other side of the deal. I have some contributions, but they come from the projects I, I work on. So, uh, but yeah, we we are investing in in contributing to core. We have not right now two developers who are not working full time for core, but are especially now before DrupalCon because we try to get the. <laughs> Triple H released, uh, contributing a significant amount of time towards uh, Triple Core. You probably know Lauri by now. He has been really visible in this Triple Con. And maybe Bart Fenstra or Xano also. Those are the guys who are mostly uh, contributing to Core from us. All the other guys are also, we are, we are now, I think, in place nine in the, in the contributors list, which is pretty good because we are a kind of small company still. Which is created by Larry. Yes, that's true, thanks. <laughs> so can you uh, speak a little bit to the model of contribution, um, of paid contribution that they are uh, working under? Are they full-time uh, contributing or? Uh, when Bart started in last spring or summer, he was contributing full-time. Now he's doing part part. Um, Lauri is contributing three days a week right now, I think, at least until DrupalCon. Uh, Lauri got a generous offer from Drupal Association to pay for some time before DrupalCon to contribute on some initiative, uh, but we kind of took over that. So we offered to pay for the time, but we were also paying for him before that. I see, so basically a mixed model of, of different... Um, That's right, yes. Kathy? Sure, what was the question? Um, tell us about the model of uh, paid contribution that you are participating in. So, uh, about a year and a half ago, uh, I started working at Black Mesh, and the job offer was full-time to be a Drupal community mm -hmm. liaison. And then my work is probably split up into thirds on average. Um, 
probably like a third going to events um, and working there uh, as part of sprints or mentoring. And then uh, another third might be like contributing on issues directly from home. And then another third is uh, like sprint planning, um, other kinds of things that help with the mentoring program. Uh, and then somewhere in there, I also write blogs and do other like internal stuff. Um, before that, I was getting uh, very small, uh, regular sponsorship about 15 hours a week from a variety of companies. Initially, uh, it was Compress from Germany, and then um, Cheppers in Hungary, and also Break Tech in Chicago over the, like each one at one at a time over the years. Thank you. So I'm going to go into the doc right now and uh, ask you some questions from the audience. The first one is about um, crowdfunded uh, solutions for funding uh, core contribution, which is Drupal 8 Accelerate and GitTip. Uh, are these solutions sustainable? Uh, well, I would say um, the GitTip Gratapay uh, model uh, is not not sustainable. It's not discoverable, uh, and it doesn't have a very good experience for the people who are giving money because they have to know uh, the individuals they want to give the money to instead of the general initiatives they would like to do. And typically, the people who have the money are not intimately involved <laughs> knowing individual people. So um, that was an interesting experiment, but I would not recommend it. Uh, going forward. This was the class, they called it Gratis 31 Euro. Right, Gratipay, yeah. Because they were, they were actually, they had, well, they had several crises. Uh, mm -hmm. One was maybe too political, but the other crisis was actually they, they had their, um, their banking provider or their credit card provider changed and they needed to change uh, I think we get right. the it actually up. made it. Yeah, it actually made it impossible to give yeah. money to a team. It's, it's currently impossible to give money to a team, and but the change now is you can only give money to a team. So <laughs> this this Gratipay um, links that, for instance, Davener has, he can't get money anymore. Yeah. Uh, it needs to be a part of a team, and uh, maybe it's your fault or, or someone's fault. Whoever created the Drupal core team uh, didn't create another one so no one is there's no Drupal core team anymore yeah the um, once Alex got uh, once Alex Pot, who was part of the team uh, changed the his funding and he got hired um, and some some things changed there the amount of money that was coming into the team was not significant to, uh, to impact any of the people on the team and so the investment in doing fundraising, promotion, maintenance of it w didn't pay off. So it's absolutely my fault, but not like a but a strategic decision. It's not it's not worth investing in that, and it it didn't particularly work out very well uh, in general. Uh -huh. I look at all these things from the marketing perspective. And if you want companies to give you money, of course, everyone wants to contribute. We want to be nice to the community because the community gives lots of things to us. But still, we need to think about the visibility. And I have not seen uh, giving straight money to some, like, not anonymous, but, but like these kinds of sponsorships. It's not very good marketing-wise, at least. I don't feel like we get visibility from those kinds of things. I prefer to get a little bit more creative when, when contributing something to the community. So it involves money every time, but that's why we do things like, like uh, sponsor the mentor dinners and, and core sprints and stuff like this. We, we feel like we get more out of it with the same amount of money. It's, it's the same thing with this regular sponsorships in, in TripleCon, for example. We, we feel like we get more visibility when we 
get speakers, when we contribute to the core, and stuff like that. So when when people think that it's it's many companies think think that it's wasted money to put developers uh, work on core. But like I said, pretty much everyone knows Lauri right now, mm -hmm. and pretty much everyone here knows uh, our company at least the logo they have seen or something. And that's all part of the marketing we we put. It's they are not not accidents. We we go to the parties and have fun and stuff like that. It's all part of the marketing strategy we have. When you say everybody knows Lowry and, and knows that he works for Druid, I uh, I wonder who everybody is because I suspect that might be other developers. And I think one of the big advantages uh, for companies for paying uh, part of their team to do contribution is it puts that company in front of the people that they will eventually want to hire. Um, but not necessarily in front of customers who will give them projects. And I'm wondering if you, if you think that's accurate. Uh, no, I don't think it's accurate. Sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is the normal mantra. Like when you come to DrupalCon, you will only have developers there. There's no customers, and but that's um, that's just one of the things. Like when you when we formed our company, we had the same principles that probably all the companies have. That, like, when you ask, what do you think? If you would be a customer ordering a project from a Drupal agency, what would be the things you respect in that company? What would be kind of uh, the things you look for? And usually the answer is like quality, uh, flexibility, which we call agility in our company, and maybe uh, involvement in the open source uh, project because it brings skill in the house. Okay, now when you actually form the company and start to sell, you forget all these things. All these companies keep forgetting those principles they had when they stopped formed the company, like like being a good citizen in the community, uh, delivering quality instead of quantity mm. and stuff like that. And, and this is the same thing, like uh, an agility is one thing they always forget. Okay, we we want to do Agile, but but we are now in a hurry, so let's implement our own Scrum, like uh, uh, what's, what we call uh, crouching Agile hidden waterfall <laughs> or something. Uh, so you start to mess up with all these principles you have because you, don't, you, you do not actually believe that your customers respect those. Mm. And we tried really hard not to forget this and, and just try to... Uh, go with all these principles and go with the community marketing. We have, we have not done any uh, business to business mar marketing so far. We are now starting a little bit, but we have grown in three years from five people to 30 people just by, by doing these things we do. We contribute, we are active in the community, we sponsor these, these things, and somehow the word goes to, goes to the customers. We don't call the customers, they call us right now. And it's been always like that. So, yes, uh, the developers are here, but they talk to people. It's not just recruitment uh, thing. Yeah. It's of course we we love to get uh, to hire people who contribute to Core and who are really really skilled at Drupal. But they talk to customers also. Yeah. That is how it goes. The word just goes around, and 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 companies start to know that we actually deliver quality that they look for. I have a follow-up question for Ronnie. Um, so what made you decide that you want to um, encourage your developer to contribute to core? Um, I, I see that you listed uh, the list of benefits you see by um, allowing uh, Laurie to contribute to core, and uh, lots of people know who Laurie is and who Laurie works for. But what made you decide uh, to do that? Uh, that was one of the things we decided when we formed the company to work like this. And now we are actually getting some like we are growing steadily and we now have some money to actually give back like that and we it's it's not only like if if you look at uh, Lauri's Drupal skills Drupal 8 skills one year ago and now when he has been contributing it's it's not just marketing we we get like kick ass developers by letting them actually be in this uh, this community and, and learn from the other guys. That's why we are now really skilled company. 
with Drupal 8, and we have already re released many Drupal 8 sites uh, since the first beta, probably. So what I hear is correct, that not only companies get benefited by contributing their developer time, but developers also get benefited by polishing their skills and working closely with their core developers and learning all the skills. Absolutely. And also they, of course, get motivation because they like to work with the core and, and now they get to do it. So there's lots of, lots of benefits. So for you, billing time was not an issue that Laurie is contributing to core and you have client's project waiting for Laurie to finish. And so that was not a concern. Well, it is always a concern, but you have to put that money in to get something out. It's, you cannot just put all the developers working on or all the guys in your company or people in your company to work on the client projects and then expect to like continue that until the... You have to put money in the marketing, and this is marketing for us, and, and uh, education and stuff like that. It's Sorry? It's an investment. Mm -hmm. It's an investment, yes. Thank you. So that kind of leads us into um, another question. Uh, should Sponsorship is another way that, that companies um, contribute, and uh, should companies be motivated to do more paid contribution or more sponsorship? And if so, which one do you prefer? I... I don't really see the difference in those. They are all sponsoring the community. Uh, like I said earlier, the the, the return on, on investment in these sponsorships is not that great for us, at least. It, you get the logo on some web page, and that's it. We get a lot more from uh, from all these like shadow <laughs> sponsorships. Right. But of course, I, I encourage you to have the sponsorships and, and, and these events need money. That's definitely, but, but you would maybe need to focus on how, how the companies actually get return from the sponsorship. It's the, yeah, no, no, we are sponsoring lots of events, events, and I like it, but, but um, you, that's not enough. You have to do more than just put money in and wait for the investment to return. You have to do some field work also. But sponsoring is important because that keeps these events alive. Mm -hmm. Drupal camps live with the money the companies give them. But tickets are not usually the main source of income. So it's really impo important, but just try to get everything out of it. It's, it's not just send money and, and then stay home. You have to go to the event and actually like, you, you have to get, you buy something, but, but if you don't go there and actually take it, then, then you won't get much with the sponsorship. The logo is not the, that big of a deal. Kathy or Kalpana, would you like to comment on uh, sponsorship versus uh, paid contribution or paying developers to contribute? Which is the preferred for the companies that you work for? Well, uh, I suspect... Um, we don't want to have only one or the other, and which one is better for your company probably depends on your company strategies. Um, I think they both encourage the health of the project in different ways. So paying a contributor is uh, direct, uh, and you can see your effects on this particular person and see what they work on. Um, sponsoring, on the other hand, um, is more diluted uh, or spread out uh, and more indirect. So like for example, uh, here at DrupalCon, um, we have uh, sprint days on Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. And then we have sprint days on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And if we didn't have companies sponsoring DrupalCon, <laughs> we couldn't do that. And we would have six less days <coughs> of hundreds of people sprinting if, if we didn't have enough sponsorships. Um, so even if you took that amount of money and maybe a few companies paid 10 developers, you know, their time that that would be the equivalent of to, like, you know, do direct contribution, it, it's a different kind of, of thing. It enables, uh, for example, right now, uh, some people to work on criticals, uh, but it also opens up... Uh, the future contributors that we're going to have a year, two years from now. And, and so I think we would be in very 
uh, serious trouble if we if we didn't have those sponsorships also. So I think they're, they're both really important, but for, for different reasons. Yeah, okay, so <laughs> to not get angry letters from Triple Association. Uh, <laughs> what I meant was that uh, mm -hmm. sponsoring is really important, but, but mm -hmm. it gives you the tools. When you sponsor, you get the tools which you then use for for marketing and stuff like that. So, But if you leave those tools unused, all you get is the logo on the web page. Yep. So if you, if your company has like lots of money, then maybe it's not a problem for you. But we need to get everything out of our our cents we put in, and and that's why we don't want to left anything unused. So you get the tools by giving money, then you need to use the tools actually. Uh, from my perspective, um, um, my biggest concern is that the sponsorship, and and Ronnie already mentioned that before that sponsorship gives exposure to the companies if they sponsor Drupal cons and Drupal camps, artist prints that all make it happen because of the sponsorship. Um, marketplace is a, a step towards recognizing contribution. I think if we can provide more con um, recognition for the companies that they con um, encourage uh, their developers to contribute more to the core, I think that will be a step towards. Um, like encouraging more companies to uh, devote their developer time to work on core. Mm -hmm. uh, here. I just want to, uh, from a, so Mike Myers, uh, VP of Developer Relations for Acquia, we sponsor more events than any other organization in the ecosystem. And I think that the challenge from a business standpoint, you know, a lot of what you're saying resonates with me. Uh, more organizations would sponsor events if we could find ways to provide tangible business value, right? So when a camp approaches me and says, I'd really like you to sponsor my event, it's right now the question is, do you want a small, medium, or large logo on our website? My answer is, I don't really care about the size of my logo on your website. Do you want a booth? No, I don't want a booth because the people I send to the camp don't want to stand around at a booth. They want to go to sessions. So I feel like we need to change the sponsorship packages to match the needs and the interests of the businesses and the people with the money. And then if we're willing to do that, I think that we'll find more businesses willing to sponsor at a significantly higher level, which would, I think, meet the needs of the community. Um, but we really need to kind of rethink our approach to uh, sponsorship and events uh, as a community. Mm -hmm. Please use the mic. Um, so what would you want? Do you want like to sponsor and then get a meeting with some CEO? Or? I mean, oh, sure. yeah. um, well, I'll, I'll speak on behalf of you know a lot of the partners and clients as well as my own needs. Um, I think that you know every organization I talk to uh, needs to find talent, right? They want to grow their teams. Uh, having a booth is not a great way to do that, right? Random people come up to me. I don't know who they are. Um, something that we do here at DrupalCon that we could replicate at a camp level, for example, is give people that are seeking job opportunities the opportunity to indicate that when they register for a camp. And then as a sponsor at a particular level, you could say, uh, send them a list of those people. And that way, before I show up at a camp, I have a list of potential candidates. I can look them up on LinkedIn. I could contact them directly and say, hey, of the 30 people that are looking for jobs at this camp, I actually want to interview these two people. and might actually walk away with a great candidate. So, you know, just like a, a simple idea. Uh, well, actually, in uh, the Drupal camp Montpellier, uh, in France uh, last year, or this year, I don't remember, uh, there was a job speed dating thing. So probably the, well, communication. I, I would like yeah, to bring yeah. this back to contribution and paid contribution, because uh, we kind of veered off into the weeds a little bit. Um, so the next question I would like to ask the panel is, um, so we, sp we spoke about the D8 Accelerate Fund, which has uh, helped to uh, pay for expenses and uh, time of uh, contributors to work on critical issues. Do you think that uh, the DA should have a sort of a permanent crowdfunding platform where the community f members could raise um, the funds for contribution? Well, there's a lot of power these days in this uh, 
crowdfunding things, but I don't know if those are for the companies, maybe for the in individual. Uh, like individuals are now giving 20 euros a year or something to to have this batch from Drupal Association in their Drupal profile or something. Uh, this is the, I mean, why not? But it's not for the companies in my from my point of view. I, I could actually maybe contribute something from my own pocket, but but when I have to think about the return on invest for the company, no, I don't think that's a very interesting model for us. So, yes, keep doing it, but don't expect it to have the same audience as the sponsorship deals. So, can I say that, is that why it took us so long, seven months, to raise only $250,000? because companies didn't see the value of just donating money to D8 Accelerate Fund? Well, that's obvious, right? Uh, if companies see value in that, they will put money in it. If, if there is no money, then they, the companies didn't see why, why they should invest in it. Was it 250000 or 125000 mm. It was two fifty, I think. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm a little iffy on that myself, but I think um, there were four companies that they established a guarantee they would total up to 125 and then matching another 125 raised so the total amount of money was 250 some companies gave significant chunks and other parts of it came from small individual contributions from uh, community members so what it took seven months is actually to get to because we started with almost for sure yeah you we, we exactly yeah uh, uh, we we started with uh, with a with a commitment of one hundred twenty five thousand dollars at the beginning, and the idea was that uh, each dollar that was uh, donated uh, by individuals and companies would be matched by the the the, uh, the anchor companies who uh, who uh, made the initial initial investment in the uh, in the uh, uh, program. Uh, I believe that half of that initial one hundred twenty five thousand dollars came from the DA's uh, DA's. Uh, um, uh, pocket to yes. begin with, and then the anchor companies um, donated the uh, their six, 62, whatever, 62,500 um, to bring that up to 125,000. Yes, I think that's right. Um, I think that there are some parts of the Drupal 8 Accelerate that met the needs of businesses that we do want to keep around um, that were successful, uh, but there's more changes that we need to do um, uh, when we were in the um, funding boff right before this one of the points that Alex Pot uh, mentioned quite well was that funding is a skill and with specific techniques that are based on research and getting good results you know informed by numbers and strategies and there are several things that we can improve on uh, that uh, that was not done in this first centralized attempt by an uh, official organization. So as a first stab, I think Drupal 8 Accelerate was done by the Drupal Association on Drupal.org was pretty good success. And I think um, with some fundraising skills to improve that, we can do even better. The parts of it that I think met needs of big companies was uh, they could easily find the place to donate. It was on Drupal.org. Um, they did not have to identify the blocking issues, the important areas that were lacking talent. They did not need to then find the talent and pay them. So they could just give money uh, to a place that was very central, easy to find, and then that place would distribute the money. So that part of the model, I think, worked really well, and we should keep that around. Just one quick question, one quick comment. So it seems to me in the end, all this effort of the Drupal 8 Accelerate, you guys have drew it by hiring two guys now. You are basically making the same investment, that is, getting to this 125,000. Well, gee, if they paid two hundred fifty thousand dollars for seven <laughs> months of work, like I want to go work at Druid. 
I don't think it's quite equivalent. Uh, there were uh, the Drupal 8 Accelerate um, uh, helped many individuals work on core that would not have been able to otherwise and would have had to take client project. Mm -hmm. More than just one or two people, uh, many people. Uh, I, I've wondered for some time if when we're trying to do funding, we always go to companies to do funding. And I think about, you know, let it begin with me. You know, what can I do as an individual? You know, I have contributed to core in the past, and, you know, I do core through corporate, you know, through, through my paid job now. But I've made a decision in my life that I have a lot of client work that pays very well. Please don't. Matthew. Um, I, have, I have a lot of paid work that keeps me very busy, and to take the time away from that to do core work, you know, I'd have to take a salary cut. Um, or charge more. Well, I do charge more. We charge a lot, and I like the money that I make. <laughs> okay, so, all right. So, all right. so the decision that I have made personally in my life is to try to fund other core developers. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when GitTip was, was around, I decided I'd give a half hour of, of paid time a week to GitTip. You know, and when we did D8 Accelerate, I decided to donate one day's pay to D8 Accelerate. Mm -hmm. I've... I've thrown this idea out for other folks, and it doesn't seem to resonate. And uh, I'm just stating it again here. I'd, I'd like to try to encourage the community of people that are like me. That you know, I've been in the community for 10 years. I've known in the community for the work I've done, but I haven't been contributing to D8. And this is the way I contribute to D8. And there's got to be more people like me that could contribute in that way. And so I, you know, the question I proposed in here was, you know, a tithing type of system where we had a badge. I don't know how to make this something that's enticing, but I really believe that this is part of my professional duty to you know, contribute back, just like being a, a Drupal Association member is part of my professional duty. If I want to benefit from these things, it's something I have to do. Right. Yeah, for, for some people, when they give uh, a significant percentage of what they have, right, that's a big impact on them. And for other entities, they could give the same amount. It would be a much smaller percentage and it's hard to balance what kind of recognition you give people, mm -hmm. you know. I think it all comes to, like, sorry. Uh, the problem with, with all this community contribution stuff is that it's really hard to measure the return on invest. It's hard to get the numbers, how much, okay, I, I put this much money in, how much do I get? get back and when and and is this money actually right. coming from that so you just have to trust your instincts <laughs> on this and that's well yeah so in terms of d8 accelerate though i think it's pretty one hope hopeful measure is how much sooner you get drupal 8 mm -hmm. like that's literally the measure right mm -hmm. like we can all sit around and wait for it to be done in another two years when we're out of business or if being in business soon is important to you, your return on investment is that you give money and you get to have Drupal sooner. Sure, but that assumes that we cannot sell Drupal 7 anymore. We have Drupal. This is not the first Drupal we get. But, but I agree. Uh, we also are really eager to get to Drupal 8. And like I told, told you, we already have Drupal 8 sites and we really like Drupal 8. So... That is one of the reasons we really try to contribute. But, of course, one thing is that when Drupal 8 releases, uh, so that everyone wants to buy it, we are already ahead of our competition because we have contributed. We know how the system works. Um, in my opinion, I think that um, we should, or DA should have started D8 Accelerate Fund uh, sooner. Uh, when I used to contribute, I used to encourage my um, co-workers to why don't you contribute to core and because we are all benefiting from uh, Drupal and more you contribute you get more opportunity to learn and you know grow um, but nobody was interested and they used to ask me oh how your core work is going how is it coming along and sooner like slowly slowly they started like not bothering at all so when I mentioned about Drupal 8 accelerate fund that if you don't contribute to core you can contribute this way like, you can donate money, and it will help us release Drupal 8 faster. But I think it, it, at one point, I, it's very hard and sad to say that it lost momentum in some 
for some of the developers that they don't care about Drupal 8. Like they say, oh, they asked me in a mock way that, oh, so how is Drupal 8 work going on? Are you still contributing? So it's it's kind of sad. I think if we could have done this a step um, um, earlier, uh, that could have help, helped us. But it's never too late. Um, you, you just said that um, you were assuming that if Drupal 8 was not getting released, um, you would still be in business because you, because you would still be able to sell Drupal 7. I disagree on that because I say, think that um, clients are looking for sustainability of their websites, sustainability of the, product, the pro product they're basing their websites on. And since Drupal 8 has been announced so long ago and it is still not released, uh, clients are actually losing trust in the Drupal project as a whole and therefore not only in Drupal 8 but also in Drupal 7. So I think what Kathy said, if, if Drupal 8's release is two, year, two, years, uh, two extra years away, we would all be out of business, I guess. Yeah, and you're, you're, you're correct. And I'm, I'm it's great when he says it, but not when I say it. It is, sorry, okay. <laughs> okay. You are both right. Uh, the thing is that I still trust that Drupal 8 will be released. I, I'm, not, I'm speaking about if it's one, one month away or two months away. If it's two years ago away still, we st then we have a problem. So, yes. But, uh, it, it, but one, of the, one of the problems is maybe in the other end. Uh, why do we announce it? to our customers like th three years before we release it. <laughs> because it was announced to us two or three years ago. Yeah. yeah, but that is part of the problem maybe. But I, but I think... Uh, we, we have strategies in place to fix that. I know. We are not planning on repeating that. Yes, there are now this semantic versioning and, and some introducing some agility in, in, in the core contribution and stuff. So I think we are heading in the right way now and, and the community is understanding this problem. Hey, um, that's you. I just wanted to share that um, we've been a bit before the D8 Accelerate Fund with the D8 Rules Initiative to to get funds to port a mm -hmm. contributed module to Drupal 8 that's used on 25% of all the Drupal websites. Mm -hmm. um, what's challenging but also a very rewarding experience and we raised uh, 18,000 euros. Um, the more than a year later, we finished the first milestone, so we spent all the money. Um, and it was, was kind of a great experience because on the way, first of all, we could fix a lot of Drupal core issues, we could work on the module, we could also train a lot of people, so we got a lot of more people involved. But I also feel like it's still really challenging, like um, now having to ask again for money and having to ask twice, like for milestone two and milestone three, I have to, have to raise double of the money that I've already raised. I just feel like I don't know if I if I really will have the the energy to do that again. Um, so yeah. Well, it's, fundraising is a separate job, like Kathy mentioned earlier. Exactly. Mm -hmm. so. Uh, so maybe a bit uh, broader question. Uh, so if we take the Linux uh, kernel, for example, I mean they get a lot of people full time paid to work on it because it's critical to businesses, so, you know, Microsoft and all those guys. Um, so the question is, how can we make Drupal, you know, occupy the same critical space in company so that they have to, you know, hire full-time core developers? Well, if it's even possible, I can just I the website. Can I answer? So I think the Linux kernel is quite different. It's not so easy to contribute to that. So if we want to have the Linux model, we should it make harder to contribute to Drupal Core. <laughs> <laughs> Contributing to the Linux kernel is extremely hard, and if you have one patch in a, a patch in the Linux kernel, you most likely get a job somewhere because you made that happen. <laughs> so Drupal is really easy to get into, and people rely on the fact that somebody at some point will fix it. You can't, if you're a professional company in Linux, and you have a specific problem, nobody will fix it for you. You have to do it yourself. You have to hire core people. That's not the case in Drupal, so it's it's. Mm -hmm. I think it's that's hard to compare. Yeah. But I think that Drupal community is doing awesome work on fixing all the problems, and especially the security issues we have had now. It's they are doing things right, so I don't think that's actually a problem currently. Hi, 
Um, just to lead the conversation. And, um, I heard you mentioning about the current competition of Drupal, and I would like to maybe understand better what you think it is the current competition uh, on, on Drupal, and what do you expect in the next five years in terms of competition? What will be our, so to say, what will be Drupal's main competitor? Uh, whatever you see that to still be a platform, uh, like a community developed one, or whatever some new framework that will come up. Yeah, okay, so you heard the competition and took it as competition to Drupal. I was referring to competition to Druid, but uh, I think different countries have different different problems with this. In, in Finland, we are now, well, I'm not going to mention in systems and starting those wars, but anyway, we have some competition there, but Drupal is now extremely strong. And the way to keep Drupal alive is to keep the Drupal companies alive, I think. The community is, is, is awesome, but you need the business around Drupal to, to keep it alive. But in, in Finland, it's really strong now. I think maybe Tree's already answered that to some extent in his keynote. Uh, I'm not sure if you saw it. And otherwise, very soon, I think after this slot, there is a Drupal 8 retrospective. Maybe it's a good question for Tree's. Yeah. So we have um, about 10 minutes left in the session. I would like to ask um, all of you about what do you think the future of paid contribution looks like and what is your kind of uh, a wish list for that or ideal state that you can imagine? Well, so I've seen um, the trend recently, especially within the, within the last year, of companies who have a strong, secure financial business position are publicly announcing that they're hiring uh, people specifically to contribute to open source projects, uh, half-time or full-time people. But they are either adding to what they already have in place in terms of company policy, or they're rearranging their resources to have some people who have concentrated time. Um, Obviously, Druid is, is doing it. Um, Pantheon has two people now. I work for Black Mesh. Alex is at Chapter 3. Acquia has six to whatevers, right? And, and being uh, public about it, not keeping it a secret. Mm -hmm. So I see that trend. Um, I don't have concerns about the trend, and I, would, I, I, think, it's, I think it's effective and, and healthy. So I would like to see that continue as part of one of the ways that, that, that happens. I also think Drupal 8 Accelerate should continue and improve. And in terms of like the recent things that have changed, I think those are really good. But I think one of the things we're really lacking right now in terms of um, at least Drupal 8 is we're lacking clients, huge, gigantic clients with money that want Drupal 8 right now. And I think for past releases of Drupal, we've had those in the past. And, and, and we don't have those right now. And I think we're feeling the effect of, of missing that. It wasn't public in the past. And I think we're missing it right now. And I think we can sense that. Um, I'd like to address that, uh, that thing first. Uh, yeah. I think why we are missing that is because the companies are a little bit afraid because the changes were a lot bigger uh, now when we went to Drupal 8 because the whole framework changed. When we switched from Drupal 6 to Drupal 7, companies were confident that they still ha have the skills to offer Drupal 7. Now many companies are not so sure. Uh, but okay, but that wasn't the original question. I, I think the game is about to change with the paid core contribution now if the versioning changes and the release system changes, because I think that uh, the best point for companies in terms of visibility is to contribute when the, when the Drupal version is getting visibility. And that's usually, I think, when it's uh, announced, first when it's announced, and then uh, like four years goes, mm -hmm. no one contributes because, because it does not gain attention. And then when the release gets 
uh, closer, then people start contributing again because they get more return on their money. Yeah, I think I think that's exactly right. And when um, a couple years ago, when I was talking with uh, Hayrocker about that, that was exactly his point. When he was trying to raise money for uh, CMI for the Configuration Management Initiative, he said his biggest problem was that he had companies that were willing to give him a lot of money, but they wanted to see something in six months, not three years. Mm -hmm. So the semantic versioning and the being able to add features thing, you're totally on point there. Right. Yeah, what concerns me a little bit about uh, people getting core developer jobs is the way they got it, like you and Alex. Basically, if, if somebody wants to do the job that you are doing, they have to be unpaid for, for one and a half year, right. do lots of stuff in their volunteer time, mm -hmm. make a big name in the community, then making the rounds to like 20, 30 companies, please hire me, please hire me, please hire me, a lot of begging, and then finally you get your job. So it's, it feels a little bit... Um, Abusive. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. It's... Mm -hmm. I didn't understand correctly. So, uh, so did you say that it's hard to get to work for a company that wants to contribute? Or I, I had yeah. if, if you want to do a purely core developer job, purely. There, there are no job advertisements out there that would provide that, so you have to find yeah. your way in. Yeah. By, by working for free yeah. for mm -hmm. several years. Okay, okay. Uh, and, and there's also another risk, because now we're releasing Drupal 8 your company is not going to be looking to the horizon to Drupal 9 for quite some time. So they might actually fire you. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I it, it could happen with yes. others. <laughs> no, no, no. I don't think so I with in your case. So. <laughs> so, 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 sorry, can, can I answer it first? Yes. Uh, the, um, I don't think it's reasonable to expect maybe that you can work 100% of your time for four years towards the core. But it's reasonable to ask, like, to put part of your time because it's too expensive for a company. Even if they like to do it, uh, they don't want to get bankrupt. Mm -hmm. But so, uh, if you want to do part-time core development, I'll get you the deal and you can sign it. <laughs> I will hire you right now. But okay. <laughs> and just to answer your question or the thing you just mentioned, know that. Drupal 9 is so far out, what is the value? Why not just fire those people? Exactly because of semantic versioning. You will actually have only six months from the time that you're actually working on something to actually being able to use that is only six months instead of years, and that's a huge, huge difference. Some companies were looking for Drupal 8 because it had so many things on it. Uh, that they wanted. The, the new semantic versionings are, some companies will say, yes, I want that. On the other end, they will say, oh, but I want that other thing that uh, is going to be only three years from now. I, I don't want to wait. I just do not bother. Or, I don't know. It's it's one possibility. Yeah, I, th I think it will actually help because um, it will be more apparent which <coughs> things are on the horizon, and then when you're keenly interested in them, you will have more optimism that that's going to happen. So instead of some kind of generic, like, something is coming, you probably want to fund, you'll be like, oh my god, this thing. And as a company, that could be directly in your interest. Yeah. One, one thing that I, would, that I didn't see in the conversation up to now, and it was just you two talking in private before the conversation started, the new sorting of the marketplace. Mm is probably going to do a lot to, to encourage companies to actually get their employees uh, contributing. It's going to be only now only code, because that's the thing we can measure, right. uh, unfortunately. So mentoring and being the mentor everywhere does not count, but... Um, well, that's, that's not actually true. So, uh, like, a while ago, we had, for years, a culture of... Um, counting contribution, only code, and counting it through core commit mentions. So if your name wasn't in the message of the core commit, there was no way to count your contribution. And um, culturally, that had started to shift, and additionally now, uh, the core committers are making significant effort to give uh, credit to people who do um, 
reviews. Uh, so there are now people getting commit mentions that are not writing code on maybe that specific issue. It's very difficult to actually do a review on something without having ever done that. But there's more there. And I was talking to Jess the other day uh, because as part of the um, mentoring conversation that we were having about what, um, what benefits uh, mentors get and how they don't get recognition. Mm -hmm. And Jess uh, recommended that when mentors are helping somebody else work on an issue, that the mentor make a comment on the issue saying, I, as a mentor, am helping so-and-so work on whatever. And when a mentor does that, that allows the core committers uh, to then even give credit. If a mentor does not comment on an issue at all, they can't get credit for it. So if we can start to establish a pattern of exposing mentoring on the issues, that at least gives us the availability of giving those mentions that are now counted through the new comment attribution. So when you make a comment on Drupal.org now, there's um, a place where you can say, I'm working as a volunteer, or I am working for my company, and then you can auto-complete which company you work for if you work for more than one. And additionally, you can say, you can add on for customer whatever. So as if I'm mentoring, and I'm working for Black Mesh, and I'm helping somebody else work on an issue, I can make a comment on it, saying I'm mentoring them, attribute my comment to Black Mesh, and then my mentoring things that may not have otherwise produced any kind of commit mention start to increase their ranking in the marketplace, just as if I had worked on a patch for the issue. And because of the uh, multiplying effect of mentoring, um, so she was recommending that we could, we could use that as a way of uh, recognizing that contribution and encouraging companies to do that also. I think that would be great. I would like to give Kelpin a chance to uh, talk about her wish list um, as the last thing since <laughs> um, the, our session is now over. Uh, my wish list is like how can I, if I'm, for example, I'm not looking for a job, but if, if I'm looking for a job, and I have certain patches in core. That's only my resume. That's the main attraction of my resume. How would I attract companies to sell my resume and say, please hire me because I know something about Drupal 8 maybe other people don't know. And how can I encourage companies to um, encourage more employees to work on core? All right, thank you. We can continue this conversation, but we should, we need to close up. Very great, yes. That's great.